Hi everyone, my name is Gracie Ermi and I'm here today with Novo Foundation to share my STEM story. I'm so excited to dig into it and share it with you. So let's get started. So my name is Gracie Ermi. I am a software engineer, but beyond that, I am a lot of other things. So I am a knitter. I knit that yellow sweater that you see that I'm wearing there in that picture. I am a hiker. I love hiking all around. Um, I live in Seattle and the Pacific Northwest is just an amazing place to get outside and enjoy nature. And so I love hiking anytime I can. And I'm also a sister. I have three sisters and two brothers and I love having a big family and lots of siblings. It's always very fun. And there's some of them, they're, they're all my best friends. So um, it's really fun to have so many siblings. And I'm also a dog owner. So I, my dog Bella there is in that picture. She's just the cutest, the cutest little dog ever. So um, she, yeah, keeps me very happy. So that's a little bit about me. And now you'll hear even more about me and my STEM journey. I work at a company called Vulcan in Seattle, Washington. And our mission at Vulcan is to tackle some of the biggest challenges in wildlife conservation, climate, ocean health, and communities. Um, and a lot of what we do to tackle those big challenges is build technology. So I work mostly in the wildlife conservation and ocean health spaces. And so the code that I write is helping protect endangered animals and keep our oceans healthy which is pretty amazing. It's really, really rewarding work to do. And I had no idea that this career existed until I found Vulcan. So how on earth did I get here? So starting back when I was growing up, um, I grew up in Mount Vernon, Washington, which is a town about an hour and a half north of Seattle where I live now. And even though we were I grew up fairly close to Seattle, which is a big tech hub. Um, I didn't personally know anyone who worked in tech. And I also didn't have, and my high school didn't offer any coding classes. So I really didn't know or imagine what it could be like to work in tech, except for what I saw in movies and TV shows, which as we all know, is a lot of stereotypes. And a lot of those stereotypes are not true about every person who works in tech. Um, so in movies, you know, often the characters who were computer programmers were people who kind of sat in their basement alone and coded um, and weren't very social. And I just really did not relate to what those, who, those characters at all. And I really had no interest in that career if that was what it was going to be like, right? That did not appeal to me at all. Um, what I did like, what I knew I liked, was playing the saxophone in band. I loved playing sports. I played a ton of different sports. And I also loved a lot of other subjects in school, but I just really had no interest in tech. And younger Gracie would definitely never have imagined that someday she would be working in tech. That would uh, really surprise her if I were to go back and tell her that fact. What I, what I did imagine I would be doing someday though was something where I felt like my job was making a positive difference in the world and the work I was doing was really helping people or helping solve big problems. Um, and I didn't know what exactly that would look like, but I, I knew that someday that's what I wanted to be doing. So as I said before, my high school didn't offer any programming classes which means that once I got to college, I literally knew nothing about computer science or programming. I had never written a single line of code in my life. However, when I got to college, I was required to take a programming class because of a different scholarship program that I was in. And so I was frankly quite terrified to take this class. I thought, you know, those stereotypes that I had learned from movies and TV shows were still in my head. And I really thought I was nothing like the people who were quote unquote good at coding or good at building technology. So I thought I was gonna be terrible at this class. I thought I was gonna fail or just hate every second of it. But once I did take it, 
I started to learn that I actually really love coding. It's something that is creative and involves logical problem solving. And those are two things I love. And so to combine them into one skill, into one you know, subject of coding was just like, it blew my mind. I, I loved it so much. Um, and I also had really great professors who showed me that writing code to then build technology is an amazing skill to have if you want to take part in building that change that you want to see in the world or solving those big problems that you want to see solved. Because tech is all around us, right? And tech's being used every day to solve big problems. And that was a way I had never thought about technology. I had always thought about like video games and apps on your phone, which are also things that you know bring people a lot of joy um, and are a, you know a great thing to build. But I had never thought about it as a way to, you know, make people's lives, solve problems in people's lives and um, solve problems that the planet is facing. But my professors showed me that that was a possibility. And so computer science was super appealing to me from then on. So I decided to major in computer science. I will say, though, that it was certainly not a straightforward, easy path to choose. I really struggled, especially at the beginning, to learn what was going on and to really um, learn that computer science problem solving skill set. Just like anything, it takes practice to learn. And I had to realize that just because it was hard didn't mean that I was bad at it. It just meant that I needed to practice and that it maybe was going to take me um, a while to solve this problem this time, but the next time I try to solve that same problem, it will be faster. And each time you get better and better until, you know, you really start to get the hang of it. I had a lot of thoughts in my head telling me that I wasn't good enough because it felt hard, but I had to really learn to persevere through those thoughts. My brain started, would tell me every quarter that I had learned as much as I could learn in this next class was going to be where it got too hard. Um, even though I had done well in previous classes, I would panic that this time it was going to be too hard and I wasn't gonna be able to do it. That was, those were really hard feelings to face um, and, to, and to not let them stop me was hard. But I'm here to tell you that it, it, it won't get too hard for you. If you keep practicing and keep working at it, you will be able to learn anything that that coding can throw at you and that tech can throw at you. Um, it just takes practice. And those feelings of panic that I had, that I was, um, that I had reached my limits, you know, those, uh, a lot of people call them imposter syndrome. If you've heard of imposter syndrome, that's kind of what it is, where you feel like you, it was a fluke that you were able to get this far and that people are gonna figure you out and figure out that you're, you don't really know what you're doing. Um, those were feelings that I had uh, all the time. And I still sometimes face imposter syndrome. Uh, and it can be exacerbated when, um, like in a lot of my classes, I, there weren't very many other women in the classes with me. And that made it really hard to um, believe that I belonged in those places. And so those feelings sometimes still come up. But I'm here to tell you that uh, I learned that I did belong in those places. And if you ever feel those feelings, you do, you still belong there too. And you can persevere through anything that you come up against. And just because it's challenging doesn't mean that you're bad at it. It means that you just have to keep practicing and you'll, you'll get the hang of it eventually. Because I persevered, it was all worth it in the end. I got my bachelor's, which took four years, my bachelor's in computer science. And then I, I stuck around. I loved learning about computer science so much that I decided to get my master's degree as well in computer science, which took about two extra years. And both of those degrees are from Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington. And they are the two accomplishments I'm probably most proud of in my whole life because I had to work at them and because I feel like I really overcame a lot of a lot of challenging times to get them. And it's, it's, it was all worth it in the end. And I'm so proud that I have those two degrees. And it's also worth it because now I have the coolest job ever because I decided to study computer science. 
I get to help animals that I love with code that I write, um, which is really a dream come true. I specialize in something called machine learning, which is a type of artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is how we teach computers to do something automatically so that humans don't have to, or so that humans can spend less time on something and maybe have the computer assist them to do whatever that thing is faster. Most of the projects that I work on have to do with wildlife conservation. And so we're really trying to build tools that wildlife experts can use to get the computer to do the most tedious parts of their work. So then the experts can focus on doing more important stuff um, because we really need humans to be doing wildlife conservation. They do incredibly important work to protect animals and to study animals um, so that we can keep them around for generations to come. And so we really need humans to be doing that work, but there are just some parts that humans um, can save time if we let computers do that stuff instead. So I'm teaching computers to do that most tedious stuff. So then human experts have more time to focus on the really important stuff as they learn and learn about and protect animals. And so I've worked on projects related to elephants, related to sharks and rays, uh, related to killer whales, which are my favorite animal. So that's been an especially exciting project to work on. Um, and I usually use the coding language Python to do my work, if any of you are familiar with Python. Um, it's a really good language actually to learn for your first language if you've never tried programming before. Um, and it's also a really useful language. I use it every single day. So I have a really amazing, rewarding job. Um, it's still challenging, of course. Like these are big problems that we're trying to solve to be able to help protect these animals, but it's so worth it. Once I figure something out, it's just the most rewarding feeling because I know that um, that that piece of code that I've written or you know whatever I've contributed to is really making a positive difference in the world, just like I always hoped to from the beginning, right? So it's very rewarding and fun um, to be able to help scientists and help animals in this way with my code. So I have some advice for you that I wish I had heard as a student. Um, and first that would be to try everything. School is a time where you have so much opportunity to just try a ton of different things and see what you like. And so really take advantage of that. You know, even if there's a class that you feel like, oh, I, I don't know if I would like that, or you feel like it's gonna be too hard for some reason, try it anyway. I cannot encourage you enough to just try it anyway and give it a real honest try because you never know what you'll end up, what will end up surprising you and what you might find out you really love that you wouldn't have known um, if you hadn't tried. So, and, and if you end up not liking it, that's also something useful to learn about yourself. So there's no harm in just trying everything you possibly can and seeing what you end up liking. Second would be that feeling challenged is good. As I was talking about before, you know, I felt um, really challenged and I, I, I struggled a little bit when I was learning to code. Um, but, and I often felt like because I was struggling, that meant I was bad at it. There were other things besides coding that I ended up trying that I felt like were too hard. So that meant I was bad at it. But I had to learn that just because you feel challenged does not mean that you're bad at it. It just means that it takes a little bit of practice before you're going to feel comfortable doing that thing. Um, and in the end, often the things that challenge you the most are the things that are the most rewarding once you do figure them out, once you learn how to do them, and once you can use those skills to, you know, make stuff or um, do things later on in your life. And so feeling challenged is good. And just embrace that feeling and run with it and keep practicing um, and persevere, especially in tech, because uh, as my third piece of advice will tell you, your ideas are important and we need your unique perspective in tech and in STEM in general to be able to solve the big challenges that we're up against in the world. You know, we have climate change, we have um, you know, problems like not everyone has enough food to eat or not everyone has a home to live in. And we need creative solutions to solve these big problems. And your unique perspective comes from the experiences you've had and the interests you have outside of tech and STEM and also inside of tech and STEM. Um, and, you know, 
you you are unique and your ideas are unique and we need the world needs to hear them so that we can work together to solve these big problems and so i cannot wait to see what you build and what you create as you all continue on your stem journeys as well and then i just wanted to thank the Nueva foundation for inviting me onto their youtube channel to um, talk to you all I am such a big fan of Nova Foundation. Their mission to inspire kids to be curious, confident, and courageous by discovering the world of STEM is something that I'm so in favor of and so supportive of. And I'm so excited that I finally got to work with them um, on this video and hope to see you all at future Nova Foundation events and, um, and other Nova Foundation uh, opportunities in the future. And finally, if you want to stay in touch with me, which I hope you will, you can follow me on Instagram at Gracie Ermey. You can email me any follow-up questions to my email address there. And if you wanna learn more about my work uh, and specifically the project I work on related to killer whales, you can watch the video I made with Goldie Blocks on YouTube, which is called How Can Coding Save Orca Whales? So I hope that you learned something. And again, I just can't wait to see what you all do on your STEM journeys and your tech journeys. And uh, thanks again to the Nuevo Foundation for letting me uh, come on here and talk to all of you. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day.